Hello everyone, welcome to BW TV. Uh, today we have with us a very special guest, Stephen Mahajan, who is the lead for the Mavericks. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. It's my pleasure, Risham. Today we are seeing that the PR landscape is evolving uh, rapidly with the decline in the tension and legacy media and on the rise of digital news platforms. PR professionals are now kind of balancing the traditional and digital strategy. It's kind of crucial to craft content optimized for online platforms and understand social media algorithms and much more. Maintaining relationships with traditional media while also engaging with digital influence is now very, very important. Uh, in today's episode, we'll discuss how leveraging data-driven insights can enhance campaign effectiveness, uh, what are some of the new challenges you're facing, and of course, your future growth plans. Uh, to start with, uh, in your long span in this industry uh, for over 20 years now, there must be many ups and downs, many waves that you must have seen. Uh, if I kind of push you to give us two to three major trends uh, which we have seen that kind of have shaped this industry, uh, what we are seeing today. In the last two to three years, what are some of the major trends you have witnessed? So, so you know, uh, uh, if I if, if go back to a couple of years and maybe a couple of decades, uh, uh, agency leaders have been talking about digital transformation for the longest time. Uh, however, it took a pandemic to reach an inflection point where the transformation happened in just over two to three months uh, and uh, it's here to stay. So uh, every media house, if you look today, as you, know, as you mentioned, you know, it has a digital extension. Although the reliance on traditional media has reduced, it is still very important uh, and very, very relevant. Influencers are finally making their presence felt. Some of the influencers have become bigger than the publication themselves. And uh, this trend is, uh, in my view, is going to uh, continue. And, you know, as we have more youngsters joining the content consumption uh, stream, you know, you will see uh, the next level of rise as far as uh, influencer engagement is concerned. Now, add to this the power of uh, engaging the audience directly which means you know the owned assets have become very very uh, critical uh, in the in the last couple of years i think a lot of brands are now focusing a lot on building their personas on their uh, digital assets engaging with their customers directly uh, and not relying just purely on the media to build uh, either the brand for themselves or or drive sales uh, for their brand so it's very difficult to, you know, if you look at, you know, just a couple of years ago from a data analytics point of view, it was very difficult to measure the impact of earned media. Uh, earned media. The only opportunity was to, you know, either calculate the share of voice or the impressions or the ad values. Uh, in my view, now that's become absolutely irrelevant because now you have tools you know, which uh, which very clearly tell you that how many times the story has been read. And that gives you a very solid insight in terms of the impact of your storytelling. And of course, there is an opportunity because if you know that the story is not resonating with your audience, you can always, you know, test other opportunities and see how you can craft stories which are authentic, but are also you're able to resonate with the uh, with the audience. So this transformation has actually helped uh, our profession and industry a lot because the storytelling has become the the. Uh, the center uh, uh, of everything now, uh, unlike uh, yesterday's when, you know, the power of dissemination and the power of media relations was the only thing, you know, which differentiated one agency uh, from the other. Now that you have spoken about storytelling, we are seeing that this is happening across the channels. You rightly mentioned that uh, people are not, not completely and only relying on media channels to kind of publicize their brand image. They're also proactively doing that uh i mean from your sense how do you kind of ensure that your company's message is consistent across different media platforms and more importantly for all stakeholders you must be reaching out to people who are reading newspaper you must be reaching out to people who are on app who are reading a 60 uh, word news point how are you ensuring that your storytelling coming across equal to all the stakeholders that's a very interesting question, uh, Resha. I mean, and in fact, you know, that's a uh, that's one of the unique propositions uh, we have for our clients. 
so it's very difficult to achieve that because you know what what has happened all this while is you know while most of the agencies have specialized teams when it comes to digital social traditional media new age media influencers but but 99% of the times you know these these skill sets don't overlap which means you know there are different teams who are implementing these campaigns and uh, which makes it very natural that you know the harmonization of the campaign becomes very challenging because of the inherent challenges of collaboration the inherent challenges of the time we have on hand so what we have done uh, uh, at least in our organization is you know we have people who are multi skilled and that's the only way to harmonize the channel across, uh, harmonize the uh, messaging across multiple channels if you have different people telling the story even within the same organization it's very very challenging it's it's not going to happen and it's not going to be cost effective to make it both cost effective and efficient you have to have people who understand the traditional media who understand social media content research influence marketing not everybody will get to all these five skill sets uh, skill sets but if you have most of your people who are deaf with at least three skill sets your chances are much better and your opportunity to actually handhold your client and navigate through this uh, very intricate challenge is is the best placed you very rightly said that uh, it's challenging and uh, and that's the reason we have leaders like you uh, now that in in such i mean how should i put it there is an abundance of information and also misinformation uh yeah. with kind of diverse sources misleading tactics just because of gaining traction there are a lot of misinformation circulating around kind of we we kind of need to see that organizations must exercise caution in managing their online reputation uh how do you ensure how how what are the strategies in place uh, that that companies kind of remain very uh very sane in terms of their online reputation how do you look at it and this is also com- coming up as a uh, as a trend wherein a lot of companies are worried about their online reputation and uh, this is kind of a risk management how are you looking at this trend coming up uh, because of the cyber security issue and what can be some of the active strategies you would like to suggest great uh, so uh, uh, i would say you know that reputation is a function of authenticity transparency and being purpose led uh, now you know when you look at uh, uh, brands you know when we were in a relative primitive age uh, where digital was not omnipresent uh, you you had the control you largely had the control in terms of your storytelling the kind of messages you want to deliver but now things are not in our control uh, so which also means you know that pe- the brands or, or personas or people who are not authentic or transparent or do, they're not led with purpose they're going to be very very uh, they will struggle a lot uh, and uh, i think this this new age has pushed the brands to be authentic transparent and purpose led and uh what has happened is you know over a period of time of course you know the vulnerability from a crisis point of view have also gone up because we live in a real time world mm-hmm. which means that you know brands will have to prepare very well uh they have to anticipate they have to plan and get their act together once the crisis happens if it will then they have to manage it very well and here both the you know, actually three things again you know which are very very relevant you know the speed accuracy and transparency in with which you engage with the ecosystem the good thing is you know that you know uh, you are you have so many platforms that dissemination of information is no more a challenge if you have the right strategy in place it's about the story you want to tell the ecosystem and the world and your audiences and then the third part uh, you know what happens you know during uh, crisis uh, because you were talking about crisis uh, it's it's a you know we also see this as an opportunity no matter what kind of crisis the brands are hit with because the visibility of the brand uh, and the consumption of the content with related to uh, crisis is very very high you know in normal circumstances we may miss some news here or there but when a brand is engaged or involved in a crisis we don't want to miss uh, that opportunity to read more about the brand which means this is a great opportunity for uh, all of us to actually leverage this to our advantage and convert it into an opportunity but again you know 
the the uh, the fact remains you know if you're not authentic if you're not transparent if you're not led if you're not being led by a purpose then it is very difficult to manage uh, uh, the crisis or both uh, sustain or build your uh, reputation now uh, where, <clears throat> where you're saying that the the, the crisis can uh, can uh, become uh, an opportunity to kind of leverage to build your brand image but but if you are not authentic not real a crisis can lead to a greater crisis and absolutely it can it can lead to uh, 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 you know getting the business we uh, see we are seeing that in some we are seeing that in some instances no there is an edtech uh, which we were talking about in news headlines all across uh, this is a similar case so yeah you are very right in your 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 take that uh, we need to be very very authentic in that point uh, now when we talk about P- uh, pr we first thing came to our mind is press release now beyond press releases relationship is is paramount right and this is one thing that i have learned from my my boss uh, that relationships is something that that can that can bring in a lot of uh, abundance fortune and even businesses so uh what are some of the most pro- productive tactics that that kind of help you to cultivate or sustain a media relationship uh when we see such evolving media landscape see i would not discount the the benefits of media relationship uh because mm-hmm. you know you can never you can never underestimate the power of relationships so whether it be with media clients the ecosystem your friends if you if you maintain and invest in those relationships you will always have a you know return to capitalize on at later point in time so 100%. that's true for any relationship including media relationships and i think you know uh, at the end of the day what really matters is the the overall power of your story no matter how good our relationship i enjoy with you for instance uh it doesn't you know it, it will not push you to publish a story which i am selling to you uh it may happen once in a blue moon but that can't be the strategy anymore right so media relations is important but you know your strategy has to evolve around the it evolved around storytelling you know how do you how do you actually craft that story so that it becomes compelling for your audience so that your interest in that story is paramount so that was from a relationship point of view you know from a investment point of view i think today i would if given you know given a choice i would you know rather get my people to understand the understand the intricacies of storytelling understand the subtlety of storytelling because anything you know you know where you are blatantly selling something doesn't go very well with the readers uh, if at all if you know even if they end up reading it it will not have a positive impact on their audience so how do you very subtly tell the story which weaves in through the intricacies of purpose and positioning of the brand is where we invest a lot of time and you know then we invest a lot of time from a strategic point of view once you have gotten the hold of the story then how do you make the story bring the story alive you know so which means you know what's your dissemination strategy and that's where you know being omni channel and harmonizing the messaging comes into play and if you're very quick in doing that you would always get a larger pie of the cake i agree with you on this uh, uh now 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 is the time we can discuss about what are you planning for the mavericks going forward what are your growth plans uh, for this year for next year sure you know so while you know we've never had uh, targets for ourselves uh, and fortunately for us you know we have been going very very uh, consistently in the last 6 years uh, i think our cagr has been close to uh, 65 70 odd uh, percent of course you know we, we we come from very small base so this number looks very good it's going to be very very tough to maintain this number as we go along but if you look from purely from a you know a strategic point of view so we've kept it very very simple one you know make sure you know that you break all the barriers to collaboration because one of the biggest challenges which most of the agencies face is everybody is playing their own game 
and if you are able to bring people together the power of team is is you know is is beyond the imagination of what a single or couple of individuals can ever uh, achieve so we put in a lot of uh, effort and emphasis there you know again from again from a strategic point of view uh, two interventions one you know getting our people to be multi skilled uh, so we invest a lot of energy and effort there and then training youngsters uh, unfortunately for us you know when we go out uh, and try and hire people from outside this breed of people doesn't exist so which makes it very difficult for us to do lateral hiring you know it's it's very very challenging people don't fit in uh, very well unless and until they are multi skilled uh, so we have to invest a lot of effort in training so we we hire a lot of management trainees and then train them to be multi skilled and that has been uh, very rewarding for us uh, and that multiplier effect is going to be even significant as we go along because you know as they become come into the middle management and senior management level you know their contribution will be absolutely uh, disproportionate uh, having a differentiation uh, you know uh, i briefly touched upon this you know we are very very different from the conventional agencies both from our approach, approach point of view and how we have structured and uh, created the culture you know which is which is uh, emanating from uh, trust and uh, transparency uh, and you know instantly uh, the purpose of our organization is to build a place where clients and people love to belong mind you love to belong and not like to belong so it is there's a huge difference between loving and uh, liking and we put all our energies to make sure that you know people love to belong here and that's uh, i would say you know from a culture point of view that's our biggest biggest uh, differentiation and then you look at you know how do you you know how do you create a structure where you are now bringing in the latest technologies including ai into play so ai uh, we have invested a lot again there in both from a people point of view training point of view and experimentation point of view honestly a lot of it has been experimentation in the last uh, 15 to uh, 18 months but today we are at a stage you know where we are able to bring in at least 2 to 3x speed in terms of our content creation uh, both from a capability point of view and diversity point of view and at least 3 to 5x speed from a dissemination point of view so as i said you know since we are living in a real time world the speed is of great great significance and then how do you make sure you know that you know once you've got, gotten the story right you know you have great uh, uh, engagement the engagement is complemented with amplification so this is where we bring an omni channel approach uh, we advise most of our clients to you know have a clear strategy for their own assets so they are able to actually milk the story well because if you leave the story only for traditional media or digital media it will not be doing justice to the effort that you have created that you have that you have put in you know creating that story in the first place and then making sure you know that the engagement on that story is uh, uh, very very well and that can be done uh, by both uh, you know you know getting influencers on board and making your own employees your your own teams to be the brand ambassadors because if your own teams don't believe in the uh, in the brand it's very difficult to sell that brand to anybody who is an outsider so you know these simple strategies i think have really worked well for us our challenge comes from the fact that you know most of the brands even today they don't think integrated they're still thinking in silos so we have to make a lot of effort to get these brands to be on board with our philosophy but the good thing is you know people who have experienced this they have experienced magic uh, happening over a period of time and uh, i think that also creates a lot of stickiness for us which means our client uh, retention rate is also much uh, greater and better than what the uh, ecosystem has to offer and to complement this because you know the place is relatively unique both from a culture point of view and what we have to offer to our people which is you know the training from a multi skill set point of view having an opportunity to serve clients who you know who are looking for this kind of skill set which means you know people who are with us uh, they are also uh, staying more uh, uh they're, they're spending more time with us so our, our retention rate of people is also relatively better and these two things combine uh end up creating both uh, efficiency and efficacy both from a growth point of view as well Lovely. as profitability now point. now chetan that you have touched upon a very important point that uh, that is being present across omni channel because uh 
it cannot be only digital or only traditional you have to a brand has to be there across channels uh looking at it there have been a fluctuation when it comes to marketing spend uh, the the kind of uh, the kind of clients you you um, entertain uh, tell us how are you seeing how bullish are they when it comes to uh, marketing expenditure uh, at the moment how are you seeing that graph you know funnily uh, uh, in my experience what has happened is you know, marketing spend is somewhere it's is is behaving like sensex these days so it depends on the mood of the market so it it can you know go up uh, in no time and you know the and the purse uh, can also see uh, uh, you know getting tight you know when the sentiment and the mood is not uh, not great and this is very true uh, for the startup ecosystem for sure so in my view the marketing budgets are now very clearly divided into two buckets which is performance and brand Uh, so the allocation uh, ratio between these two depends on the maturity of the brand. Performance definitely takes precedence over the brand in the early years because you know you have to get to a stage where you are profitable, you have a uh, you know a consistent flow of revenues, you have some amount of brand loyalty, and then you know people are thinking of investing in brand. I don't endorse this philosophy much. but this is what is happening uh, and you know when the brand matures they have more allocation uh, which goes into the brand and reputation part of the business and not just the performance uh, part of the business so what we have seen at least uh, you know when you look at from our industry's perspective or i would say integrated marketing industry perspective uh, we've been we've been able to increase the 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 share of purse from our from our clients and the the only reason is because we are able to offer 3 to 5 services to them so if you were to offer only let's say public relations or digital marketing or social media marketing i don't think you know it would uh, have been easy for us to uh, increase the share of wallet or uh, you know make sure that you know that we bring in more stickiness uh, from a uh, client perspective so finding a balance between mature clients and uh, startups finding a balance you know how do you get more uh, opportunities from within the client rather than scouting opportunities outside is where the trick lies and i strongly believe you know as the startup ecosystem matures which is which will happen in the next 3 to 5 years their focus on building brand protecting building reputation is going to be much higher than where we are today This is a very important point you just made, uh, Chetan. Uh, I kind of really agree to this. Uh, a lot of younger uh, set of brands are focusing on brand building when when they look at uh, when when they kind of look at the Reliance, Tata's, Unilever's of the world. They kind of they kind of idealize them to kind of build their reputation in the the marketing world. uh now to conclude this conversation in in your uh from your years of experience 25 to be precise what can be three of four major learnings of of being in this industry uh what would you say or or if any piece of advice you would like to uh give away to the younger leaders in this industry what are some of the major learnings you have had So I would say a couple of things, uh, uh, Rasham. One, uh, I think the only way today is integrated. You know, if you are uniskilled as a resource, you if you are, uh, you know, if you are providing services only in one stream uh, under the marketing, it's going to be very very challenging as we go along. Uh, so uh, in my view, in the next five to seven years. if you are not a integrated marketing agency it's going to be impossible for you to thrive or uh, thrive in thrive in the ecosystem the second thing is you know uh, uh, for young leaders particularly you know invest disproportionately in your talent uh, make sure you know you are not just treating them as a resource but as an investment and uh, like most of the investments you know your returns will not happen in one week one month or one quarter you know you'll have to have the patience to get the returns on this investment as well 
and that will happen once your team members have multiple skill sets they are able to think integrated they are able to implement integrated campaigns and they are able to influence the clients that this is the only way to uh, achieve it uh, so that's uh, i think the second most important thing uh, the third thing uh, uh, you know which uh, i would suggest to young leaders is not to compromise uh, your work life balance just because you want to chase a number which is which sounds crazy and i'm again you know i'm not against chasing targets uh, i think we all should uh, chase targets but we all should also remember that you know we can't get everything in life so you have to prioritize you know do you want those targets at the cost of everything else including your sanity for me that answer is no and uh, i only wish that you know i that i had learned this lesson a little earlier uh that would have allowed me to have a relatively more balanced uh, uh career in terms of you know the, the the quantum of time i could spend with my friends and uh family or invest in some of the hobbies which i had to leave aside so these three things i would imagine to be the, the most important learnings in the last 25 years lovely thank you so much ethan for making time for this i i i learned a lot of new things about what's happening in the industry thank you so much it was a absolute pleasure uh, to have this conversation with you reshim